there creepy peeps. It is creepy book club time again. Creepy book club. Hey there creepy peeps. It is creepy book club time again. And as you probably noticed from the title of this video, I'm not reviewing one book today. I'm going to review or just quickly talk about several. Um, <laughs> If you guys have been on this channel for a while, you would remember or hopefully remember from I think it was a favorites video like October favorites or something that I really love like my reference books and stuff like that. So I thought I would just mention a few smaller books that I've been reading and loving lately that aren't like they're not novels or anything like that. So instead of talking about just one of these things as they're really small, I figured I would just kind of put them all in one video. I say small and then there's this big old book in here, but I'll explain. First things first, I guess I'll talk about this one because it's not, they all have to do with horror except for one of these, which is um, Very Good Lives um, by JK Rowling. Um, and it's not really, it's really thin. You can see how thin it is. Um, and it's not like a storybook or anything like that. It's really, it's actually a speech um, or not a speech, a uh, commencement speech, you know, at a graduation she gave at Harvard University. And somebody is just, uh, you know, they've just transcribed it into a book with like pictures and stuff. And I don't know, I just really liked it. It's, it's you know, it's a cute little book. It's a really quick read um, <clears throat> for a speech, I guess. And I've never seen anything like that before. Is this something that people normally do for really inspirational commencement speeches or whatever? Do they make them into tiny books? That's just a really random pick for this video. Um, I really love old JK here. Um, she's a big inspiration for me, as I'm sure she is for many of you out there. If you grew up reading Harry Potter like I did, <clears throat> uh, she is basically the reason why I'm such a book nerd. Not basically, she is the reason why I'm such a book nerd today. So anything by her, <laughs> I'm gonna buy. <laughs> Next thing, this one is actually a storybook, kind of. And I believe I talked about this author before. Actually, I'm sure of it. I'm sure I did. Uh, Gris Grimley, Gris Grimley, Gris Grimley, Grimley. I'm not really entirely sure how you pronounce his name, but he does really awesome illustrations. And I actually have, oh, you can't see it. Um, I actually have a print by him up there. That's a uh, Gris Grimley. Print. Uh, I think it's called like trick or treaters or something like that. It's really cute. And I also have um, his in, not his interpretation, but his Frankenstein. Like he takes this like these stories and he illustrates them, and it's really cute. So this is the Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving, and he's just added. It's the story of Sleepy Hollow and Ichabod Crane, and he's just added like really cool illustrations and that's it's similar to the one I have of uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein where he's added his illustrations and put the story of or put Mary Shelley's story into it so that's just really cute and it's really thin because that uh, story is quite short but I just love the illustrations it kind it almost reminds me of Tim Burton but not it's just like creepy and cute at the same time Maybe it's not meant to be cute, but I think it's cute. All right, next thing is the big old boy. Um, <laughs> um, for some reason, I've just been really into watching The Addams Family, the original television series. Um, it's on Hulu, by the way, if anybody uh, is on Hulu, you can watch it there. Um, and call me ignorant, but I had no idea that The Addams Family was a comic or were illustrations before they were anything else. I knew it was a television series before the movies. Um, I knew that much, but I did not know that the television series came from these illustrations by Chaz Adams. And so I just, 
I kind of, uh, I think I Googled to see if there was, like, you know how they do with Calvin and Hobbes, how they put all the, they'll take all the comic strips from that and put them into a big book that you can have. And this is the illustrations, like the original illustrations for the Adams Family. And it also has little bits, like you can see, like written bits, um, where it talks about each character and the family. Uh, the Adams Family, and I don't know, I just thought that was really cool. It's a cool little book to like peruse through. You can just look at the comics if you want, or if you want, you can read the stuff about the characters. Um, I was reading in here, it started, it started with Morticia, and then I think it was like Morticia and Lurch and one other one, and then it just grew from there into the whole Adams Family that we know and love today. So that's called um, The Addams Family and Evolution. Let's see. Addams Family and Evolution. Jazz Adams. I just thought that was cute. And I learned something. <laughs> Did anyone else out there? Oh, that was really heavy. Um, Did anyone else out there know that that was like comics and illustrations before it was a television show, before it was a movie? Because I had no idea. Um, I feel like a really bad horror fan for not knowing that. Okay, next thing is kind of a trip down memory lane. So does anyone out there remember reading scary stories to tell in the dark? Because <laughs> those books, excuse my language, fucked me up as a child. <laughs> I remember those being so scary. And there was three, there were scary stories to tell in the dark, more scary stories, to tell in the dark and then scary stories three. Um, so basically I picked up or I ordered um, the complete collection of these and I thought it would be interesting to get ones because they had the original ones. If you guys remember, I can't remember the illustrator's name right now. Um, Alvin Schwartz is the author of these, but then there was an illustrator that made those creepy ass drawings for the stories and for the covers. And those fucked me up as much as the stories did. But I thought I would get this one because it's illustrated by Brett Helquist. Um, I thought that was interesting. Um, this might be good to get if maybe if you have a kid you wanted to pass this on to, but you didn't want to fuck them up quite so bad because the <laughs> illustrations are not as terrifying as the old ones. They are quite creepy, but there's not as creepy. <laughs> it almost actually reminds me of the style that um, the Harry Potter, you know how in Harry Potter each chapter had like a little drawing at the top? They kind of remind me of that or that style. I don't know, it's weird. Um, <laughs> but I just remember these stories messing me up as a kid. I don't know if I like these illustrations as much as the old ones, but it's the same stories that terrified us all when we were little kids and when I read them now I kind of wonder what the heck my parents were thinking letting me read these but yeah I just thought that was a cute little thing to throw in but on Amazon and stuff you can buy the original ones. I think my favorite part of these books um, are the cues uh, that they have in some of the stories like you're meant to read these like to your friends or to your family. And at the end, like at the end, um, that's kind of like a jump scare. It gives a note to the, the author. Now jump at the audience and scream or something like that, or jump at a certain person in the audience and scream. <laughs> I always tried to get people with that. Never really worked. I'm not that good at scaring people. Okay, last thing on my little creepy book collections video is another book by Seth Graham Smith. If you remember the last, no, not the last creepy book club, the one before that was Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith. This is How to Survive a Horror Movie by Seth Graham Smith. And I just thought it's just a really, I really like um, Seth Graham Smith's uh, style of humor and this is just like 
a cute little book that like <laughs> it basically it's basically kind of like Scream, but in book form. You know how in the Scream movies they kind of dissect horror films and talk about what you should and shouldn't do? Uh, this basically kind of expands on that. Um, <laughs> which is, it, I don't know, it just does it in a really funny way. But this literally talks to you as if you were in a, a horror movie. And I think my favorite parts are there's like four little sections in here ejection seats like like you're you literally you find yourself about to be killed and it tells you to do something silly like ejection seat number four is the cost prohibitive location like it's telling you to go somewhere that the movie makers cannot afford and then you'll save yourself which is just it's just really funny um or for example, I just flipped to how to stay awake for a week. One, try to jumpstart a montage. <laughs> it talks about how to do that or what the usual signs are. Or know your harbingers of impending doom, the dual citizen. It's just, it's really funny stuff like that. And it's stuff that any horror movie fan is going to enjoy, I guarantee it, because you read this and you're like, yep, I've seen that in about a million horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. And there's a foreword by Wes Craven. You can see there on the cover, which um, for those of you that don't know, Wes Craven is my all time favorite horror movie director. So that's just cherry on top. I get to read something by Wes Craven in here. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Let me know if you've read any of these or if you have any suggestions for books that are like similar to this that you like or novels if you have any suggestions for those leave those below and yeah that's all i have for you for this video until next time stay strange <laughs>